Matthew Lillard! All right, guys. We're going to do a crowd shot right here. Pull out your cell phones. This was so fun. When he came backstage, I was like, Matthew, would you like to do a crowd shot? And he goes, is anybody here? And I was like, is anybody here? All right, guys. All ready? On the count of three, go nuts. One, two, three. Wow. So I want to be super can First of all, they offer me a moderator, and I'd rather just talk to you directly, if that's OK. All right? Um, <laughs> I, I really, I'm not exaggerating. I literally thought there'd be like this many people here. <laughs> I had no idea it'd be that many people back there. So, it's very, 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 very humbling. So thank you so much for being here. Here's the deal. You guys, my, my belief in this moment is that you can ask me anything. I actually have answered every question there's ever been asked about the movie Scream. You can ask me questions about that movie. You can ask me about whatever you want. But... I believe that my job in this moment is to try to shine some kind of light on not only my life, but an artist's life, on a father's life, and somebody who's been in movies. Like, I like to go big picture, so feel free to ask me anything about my life. Can we say thank you to our interpreters down front, please? Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we're just gonna jump in, is that all right? All right, good. I have 31 minutes, but I don't believe in the idea or the constraints of time. <laughs> we could be here forever! <laughs> All right, who has the first question? Where's the, um, where's the microphone? Oh, hi, hi. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. Good. Do you see how many people are here? I know, dude. By the way, awesome. you guys, it's Thursday. People are supposed to be working. <laughs> What is happening? Me and my buddies took the day off, so we want to make sure we're here. But okay. Anyway, um, so my favorite movie of yours is Without a Paddle. And you know I'm in my underwear the entire film. Uh, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> What's up, sailor? <laughs> so, so one of my favorite scenes, the one of the funniest scenes I'd say, is when you guys all have to cuddle up for warmth. Sure. So. If you could tell us, like, that scene, how much of that was scripted, how much it was ad-libbed, sure. and when you were, like, reading the script, were you like, we got to do what? Like, yeah. well, that's you could part tell of us my, about that. Yeah, it's, it's part of my job to be available for whatever comes my way, right? That's part of the job. Um, those two men, we just did a podcast. If everyone, everyone knows Dax Shepard has a podcast, Armchair Expert. He's incredible. We just did, a, like, a... 20, I think it's 25 year reunion show on the podcast. Um, the funny thing about doing movies, right, is that every Kathleen Turner said to me, the very first movie I ever did, she said to me, I was like, I, I'll see you next week at, towards the end of the movie. And she said, Oh, sweetie. <sighs> she said, um, Doing a movie is like having a marriage with a built-in divorce. Isn't that the saddest thing you've ever heard? And the reality is that you become intrinsically close. You're together day in and day out. You share intimate moments. You are together eight, 16, 18 hours a day. And then at the end of the day, sometimes you never see each other again. And I was like, Kathleen Turner, I play chess every single day with Sam Waters. He's my dad. I'm going to play with him next week. To this day, I've never seen Sam Waters since. 
And the great thing about that movie is that the fellowship that we had in that film translated to a lifetime of friendship. And so those two men are still dear friends of mine. That scene wasn't uncomfortable at all. I love those boys, and they're both pieces of ass. So I'm like, <laughs> I get a hug, buff men. I have no problem with that. The, um, and the scene, I mean, the scene's hilarious. To this day, I still think it's the funniest scene I've ever been a part of. And I love that film, so thank you for your question. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Take care. Thank you. So I just wanted to ask, what role other than Shaggy um, have you, it has been your favorite, or is there a role that you would love to play? Yeah, a great question. Uh, so my favorite movies, um, my favorite role is the movie called um, SLC Punk. Which works really well in this room. Um, yeah, that's a movie that we shot here in Salt Lake City. We shot it 100 years ago. I'm 100 and 107 years old. Um, and I mean, for me, look, it's very rare in my life as an actor that I got to play the lead the entire film. Um, I'm 54, I've done however many movies, and that's the one movie that was my movie on my shoulders. That's not true. There have been other movies, but that's the most successful version of this, <laughs> this recipe. Um, and I'm super proud of the work. I'm super proud of the film. And most importantly, look, I'm a, I am a, in my life, um, I grew up, and this is an exaggeration, I have a severe learning disability. I couldn't write. Um, I can't spell to save my life. I can't do math. And I was an obese teenager. My mom and dad are both obese. I had glasses, braces, and like literally in like 10th grade, I was doing speak and spell for homework. Um, so I have been an outcast my entire life. I've always felt like somebody other my entire life. And the thing that I love is that I still hold that, even in this weird world of Hollywood. I'm deeply connected to being not like everyone in this town. And the thing I love about that movie is that movie is that people who are still outsiders, and I don't know if anyone in this room may feel that way, right? But that movie identifies that feeling and sort of celebrates that feeling, and he is a hero for those people that feel like the outside. And so for me, that's the greatest part I could ever have, right? Because it directly relates to who I am as a man. Um, and then the, the part I want is, um, I, well, I used to have this, I used to say the same line all the time, which is James Gunn's next movie. Because um, I do love James Gunn. James Gunn directed, uh, wrote uh, Scooby-Doo 1 and 2. He's now gone on to do Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's, yeah, he's doing the new Superman. Like, he's an incredible, he's a good friend of mine. I love him. But now I also, I just did a movie with Mike Flanagan. Do you guys know who Mike Flanagan is? Yeah. He's the uh, modern master of horror, and um, I, am, I am in that family for the rest of my life. That guy, how he operates, the people he works with, the way he works, is like my happy spot. So if either of those two men ever want to do something, I will literally be there tomorrow. So thank you for your question. Yeah. See, I like that question. I like the fact that I get to tell you that I struggled, right? This idea that we are all, like what you see on Instagram is your life, that's a bunch of bull crap, <laughs> right? Like any teenagers out there that are living for your Insta feed or your Twitch, Twitter, Twitter feed, nobody does X anymore. In, what's the, TikTok, TikTok. That stuff's bull crap. Get away from it. It sucks. But you know what's funny? And I do say this all the time, and this is a cheesy thing to say, but I'm going to say it. If you have an actor out there that you love, or a band that you love, or like an artist or a writer or somebody who's coming up in the music scene, follow them on socials, because that is the single most powerful vote you can give for the future of their career. Because when people are casting in Hollywood, the first thing they do is they go, how many followers? Not kidding. 
How many followers is way more important than all the years I studied Shakespeare? So follow me if you want. <laughs> but just know, just know my life is highly curated. You don't see how horrible I feel about myself in the morning. All right, hi. How are you? Your glasses are fire. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have, this is your turn to speak. <laughs> Hi, do you have a question? Yes. You're doing great, by the way. She's doing fine. Mom's like egging her on. She, don't worry about her. She's all right. She's got it. All right, go for it. Why? Why? You been should be or five not as ladies. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you for your question. So I'm in this movie called Five Nights at Freddy's. You guys are all very easy. <laughs> I know it's a laugh. Oh, here's a camera. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was in a movie called Five Nights at Freddy's, and I play this character named William Afton. And yes. And the funny thing is that. Um, that is a movie that has come around late in my career and is one of the most exciting properties I've ever been associated with because it has like expanded my, the people that like me. Because <laughs> it used to be just old people and then Scooby-Doo happened and then it was sort of younger people, but now those people are old and so I need a new generation. <laughs> I've been looking for a new generation and I found them. Which means that I hopefully will be able to feed my children. <laughs> Thank you for your question. You did great, by the way. Hi. So my name's Erica. Hi, Erica. And, uh, my question is, what unique characteristics did you bring to Shaggy Marvel and the anime cartoons and the movies? Um... So I think that, thank you for your question. Um, I feel like such a politician when I say that. <laughs> thank you for your question. And then I don't answer the question. I just totally talked about something I want to talk about. So when I played Shaggy, um, no, so I think that my super, I think that, I think that my, um, are you just sitting there recording me? <laughs> I love that you're not present at all. You're like, I'm just going to record this and I'll watch it later on the toilet. <laughs> um, so, my, so my special sauce is this. Look, when I was, uh, when I was 13 years old, did, what happened? Did I do something wrong? When I was 13 years old, um, and I was this obese kid running around trying to figure out who he was, my dad said, you can either take a typing class or you could take an acting class. The idea was that acting class would prepare me to be like a salesman, to be comfortable in front of people. And then if I was taking a typing class, I could fill out the forms, I guess. I don't know why he made me take a typing And I didn't want to take a typing class, although eventually he made me take a typing class, <laughs> which I think is totally not cool. But I took an acting class, and I found an acting class, the place where I felt special, right? Feeling like you're good at something is the most powerful thing in the world. And when you are an obese, you can, you can say yes. Yes. So when you're, when you're a kid, right, who um, isn't good at anything and then finds something that he excels at, it's amazing the power that has in your life. Right? So if you're a teacher out there, if you're a parent out there, if you're a coach... If you just tell a kid that's struggling that they're awesome, they will thrive. It's amazing how often we forget to pat people on the butt, metaphorically, <laughs> and tell them they're doing a great job. And so for me, what happened was I found a place I was good, an adult told me I was good at something, and that confidence led me into a career. I never wanted to be famous, 
I half expected I'd be in medieval times my entire life <laughs> because I love Dungeons and Dragons and that's like the best <laughs> job in the world. <laughs> right? If you love D&D, medieval times is the greatest job ever. <laughs> like to be the yellow knight is heaven on earth. Um, but it led me into a life chasing something I loved with confidence and strength. And confidence and strength in what you do and who you are is super powerful. So that's what gives me the strength to do something like Shaggy or do the work I do. Thank you for your question. Did you see how cute you look? Go back to her shot. Look how adorable you look. You look so cute. Thank you. You're welcome. What's your, what's your name? Lucy. Can I take a picture of you? Sure. All right. So I like to take... Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I like to take... I, I carry my camera around, and for the last five years during conventions, I take pictures of people. And someday I'll share them. But I like, to, I like people. And you have a gorgeous faccia. Thank you. You're welcome. What's your question? Um, I just wanted to say, do you remember me from last year you signed my shoe? I think about you every day. <laughs> you never write. Like, I signed your shoe. That's a real thing. Um, you were here last year? Yeah. Yeah. Where are your parents? <laughs> Does anyone want to claim this child? <laughs> she should be in school! <laughs> <laughs> All right. That wasn't a question, that was a statement, but thank you for your statement. Yeah, I have a question too. Oh, you do? Yeah. Aren't you greedy? <laughs> It's the cute ones. Look out. They'll kill you. What's your question? If you could draw one thing and it would come to life, what would it be? World peace. <laughs> for real. Thanks for your question. What about you? What would, you, what would it be for you? Um, I really wanted a capybara. <laughs> You want, wait. What did you want? It's an animal. It's an exotic pet called a capybara. Oh, capybara. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I think you're, I think you have to go to South America. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Are you guys waiting for a question? Oh, you're so screwed. Okay, I'll try to go faster. Do you, I, sorry, this is how I like to do Q&As. Is everyone all right with this? All right, good. What's your question? Wait, first of all, what are you dressed as? George Lucas. That's such a deep cut. That's so crazy. <laughs> all right, I love your work. Ah, oh, thanks. Anyway, uh, do you like to celebrate Halloween? I don't. Wow. <laughs> hey. Okay, um... Okay, okay, uh... He knows how I didn't say thanks for your question? <laughs> okay, um... What is your favorite uh, Shaggy moment that you've done, like either in live action or in animation? What's your name? Uh, Michael. You look awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Did you see George Lucas? He's got an yeah. attitude. <laughs> um, that's a fun question. I like that question. See, these questions are way better than some dude who's been practicing for weeks what questions he's going to ask. That's a great question. Um, so... I, my favorite scene, there's two scenes that stand out. So in the first movie, there's a scene where 
on on the island, Scooby Doo and I get in a fight because he's trying to stop me from I think going after Mary Jane, and he and I are fighting, right? And we're like dodging and and um, throwing punches, and um, he falls down, and then I jump after him. He's not there, <laughs> right? So you have to realize that. You're like walking around a stage, like man, like, and you're trying to punch something, and then you're dogging out of the way, and he's not there. <laughs> and so, I used to hate that part, Shaggy, because I felt like after that movie, I didn't work for like two years, a year and a half. Um, and I had young kids, and I was really struggling, and I thought I was famous, and I thought I was destined for great things. And all of a sudden, after Scooby-Doo, I stopped working. And why? Because I had sort of become a boy. I had grown from a boy to a man in this industry. And I was really pushing my luck with playing Shaggy at 36 years old, 34 years old. And after that movie, the movie didn't do great. Hollywood's like uninterested in me and my life. And I had a moment. I had this moment because I had to feed my kids and, my, and I wasn't working and my mother and father-in-law knew I was struggling and my wife's like, what are we going to do? And we had a big house and fancy cars and I was like, I'm going to be famous. And then all of a sudden it became clear that I wasn't really that famous. And by famous, I, merely, I really mean powerful. And by powerful, I really mean opportunities to work. And the reality is I love to work. My favorite thing to do is my job. I love my job. And I really love acting. And when you don't get a chance to do the thing that you love, all of a sudden you sort of fall apart. And I couldn't feed my kids. So I had this moment where my father-in-law, this is a very long story, sorry. Is everyone cool with this story? <laughs> sorry. But I think, it's a, I think it's an interesting story. My father-in-law said, you know, if you stopped acting and went out and sold pharmaceuticals, you'd make a lot of money. You're very charming. And I was like, I'm... I've been in like 20 movies. I was just in a $100 million movie. I'm not going to go sell pharmaceuticals. And I have three kids. I can't in this moment tell my kids, hey, when shit got tough, I sold pharmaceuticals and walked away. So we changed our lives because I realized, oh, I'm living this fancy life because of ego this idea of fancy car or fancy house, like that means nothing. So we got rid of all that stuff. My wife went back to work, sold her house and basically bought our second house, our, our, our next house. So my mortgage is like nothing. I fired my agent, my lawyer, and my, and my manager in three consecutive phone calls, sobbing in the middle of the street. And I went back to just being an actor. And I started with like little roles and built myself back up to where we are today, which is Five Nights at Freddy's and all these great things. So, I have no idea why I just told that story <laughs> other than to say, I really don't know why I got into that story. <laughs> uh, oh, because I hated the part for so long, that's why. And as I've gotten older, I appreciate the part so much more because I love having the responsibility of being shaggy for an entire generation. So, my favorite part of that movie is today, in line, I will say the Scooby-Doo shaggy voice for like kids all day. And that's my favorite part, yeah. We'll see, we'll see how you behave. All right, thank you for your question. That was the longest answer I've ever given in the history of questions. So that was good. All right. Hey. Hey. So, uh... I feel like you're a gunslinger and you're about to shoot me. You do have guns on. What's up? So, you're pretty good at doing the zany, crazy characters. And, uh, I just wanted to know, like, uh... In your experience, whenever you have to do that kind of role where you're like sticking your tongue out and you know, baring your teeth and snarling and growling and all that stuff, like, uh, did you ever have to like hype yourself up for that kind yeah. of role, or did you? Yeah. 
you know, did the lunacy just kind of come naturally? Why do you have to be so judgy? <laughs> yeah, no, I think, look, my, in, in going back in this, what we'll call the dark period of Matthew Lillard's career, when I wasn't working, I went back and I was like, my answer to how I was going to continue to survive if I never worked in Hollywood again was to teach. And in teaching, you have to define what you believe because you're about to teach it, right? And so in my acting class, I taught what I believe. And through that laboratory of like four years of teaching, full time, not full time, but a lot, I believe and my deep belief in what acting really is, is that when you are watching people in energy, you are drawn in. So people in energy to me is really evocative. <laughs> and so I'm going to ignore that so that people don't keep doing that. Um, hack the planet. The, um, but that, that energy is evocative, and so I believe people in energy is exciting, and I think you can't just pretend to be in energy. You have to be in energy. So I do a lot of things to get me in energy before I work. Does that make sense? All right, good. Hi, what's your question? Um, have you ever taken any costumes or props from set? It's so funny. I don't really do that a lot. I wish I had. Oh, <laughs> I think the, the Scream costume just sold for like $250,000. You should have taken it. Yeah. I wish I would have taken that. That would have been cool. Um, I'm not that guy. I'm not a collector. So I don't really have. I mean, I have a couple things, but nothing really that exciting. I have my hair in SLC Punk. I shave my hair off, and I have my hair in like a Tancho, <laughs> in, <laughs> an old Tancho jar. It's the dumbest <laughs> answer I've ever given. Hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> we have seven minutes. I... You guys, we can't go. <laughs> We're never leaving. Uh, <laughs> I'm obviously in the generation of Scream. <laughs> My favorite horror movie. My son actually wants to know, and I want to know, um, in number seven, <laughs> this is a deep question, um, do you think that maybe Stu Grimson would be behind it all? I have no idea. No? <laughs> I mean, I would love to do it if that they, they made sense, but it's not something... Nobody's called me, so... Oh. But I'm available. <laughs> I think he's... Tonight at 7 o'clock at my booth, I'm going to drop a TV on my face. <laughs> To prove that I can live through that moment. Nice. Right? Thank uh, you for your question. Can you do the laugh? The what? Scooby laugh. Scooby oh, we'll, laugh. we'll see what happens. I have a feeling things are building that way. Hi. Hi, Matthew. My name is Isaac. My question for you today was, if you could develop any talent or ability overnight, what would it be? Talent or ability overnight. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, for me, the, um, I wish I could develop overnight the discipline to do, to learn like a viola or a cello. I wish I had that discipline. So for me, I would never, like overnight, I would never assume to be able to do something like that overnight, but I wish I, I could assume that discipline to learn it quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, my question for you is, in your personal uh, opinion, do you think the mystery gang could solve the murders of Scream or the mystery behind the FNAF locations? <laughs> it's hard to hear you, and I can't read your lips. Okay. Just come a little forward. Go ahead. Do you think that the mystery gang could solve the murders in Scream or the mystery behind the FNAF location? No. No? All right. <laughs> it's a dog that talks. I don't think that dog has a lot of usefulness. Are you, uh, are you like, hey, man, it's... Yeah, Scooby Doo too. This is the best, you know? Yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, Way Michael. better than George Lucas. <laughs> Sorry. 
My, uh, my question is about a different movie, though. I am wondering if you still know the iconic dance from She's All That and, and how many takes did it take to do that scene? It's a whole day of shooting, and no, I don't know it. Oh. It was 78 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hello. Your hair is fire. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My question for you is, what is your favorite type of cake? <laughs> I don't like cake. <laughs> I don't care, judge me. <laughs> no, I, so I like, I, I like ice cream. So if you had cake, I mean, I would go mint chocolate chip till the day I die. Yeah. Hi. Hey, so my question is, how familiar were you with Five Nights at Freddy's before you joined the cast? That's got to be a weird pitch. Yeah, it was not, it was nothing, I didn't, no idea. I read the script, and in the script, in that last sequence, I had like three lines. And I was like, they were like, oh, this, and this very rarely happens in my life. Um... I got an offer, said, they said, if you go sit with the director, Emma Tammy, and you guys get along, the, the offer is yours, the part is yours. I'm like, oh, that's, it usually means the movie's really small and shitty. <laughs> and so I read the script, and it has no, I'm like, the, it says Yellow Rabbit, and it's at, in like, an Afton and Yellow Rabbit, and there's like, between the two parts, there's like four lines in the end. And I went to take the meeting, and I'm like, no offense, I, there's only four lines, and I don't really, and he dies at the end, like, I don't really get this. Why would you, why do you want me? And she said, well, first of all, we can find improv lines, and we'll see what happens on the day. But he is, um, he is like Voldemort in Harry Potter, and we're going to make a bunch of movies. And I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> that sounds great. That sounds great. But the funny thing is, is that I came home and I said to my wife, I was like, this weirdest meeting, this is a weird, crazy meeting, and they want me to, this movie called Five Nights at Freddy's, and my middle kid, who's non-binary, was in the other room, and Ace, Ace, Ace comes in and goes, wait, what did you just say? And I'm like, well, I've got this script in uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. They were like, you got it. You have to do it, Dad. And I'm like, I don't... The guy has, like, three lines. They were like, what's the, what's the name of the part? I'm like, Yellow Rabbit. And they're like, oh. And she, they kind of walked away, and then we're kind of listening, and I'm like, yeah, so the guy's name is, is William Afton, and then they call him Yellow Rabbit, and then Ace comes screaming back in. My son comes screaming in, and they're both like, you have to do that job. One other funny story about that is that I was talking to Scott, who's the creator of the, mo the, show, the game, and he was like, yeah, your name came up, and, and this is a true story, and there's 28 seconds left, and I'll do your question really fast, but you guys are not going to make it, <laughs> unless we stay for another six hours. Um, but th th this question, so... Scott says to me, it's, it's, it's very funny, will you sign this for my nanny? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you kind of owe her the signature. And I was like, okay, why? And she said, well, and he lives in Texas. He said, your name was on a list, and we were talking at the kitchen table about all these names, and you're, you know, we're talking, and you know, we're, your name was said out loud. And my nanny goes, oh, he was at Texas Frightmare, and he stayed four hours afterwards to sign autographs for fans. And Scott was like, that's my guy. And so, because of you, because of people like this crowd, I got the opportunity to play the part of a lifetime. So thank you. What's the question? Last question. If you could make a TV show, what would the plot line be, and who would you cast in it? I would cast Matthew Lillard. <laughs> um, 
and he would play all the parts. <laughs> and it'd be the Matthew Lillard show. <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, there's great television right now. I've, I've really, I just did a show called Cross, which is coming out on Amazon, which is fun. Um, Penguin right now, the Penguin's incredible. Uh, anything with Mike Flanagan. I mean, I, I, it's more to me about who's there and who you're working with rather than what part I play or what the show is. It's, at the end of the day, it's not about the part or the money, it's really about the journey. And I know that sounds really cheesy or like something you would read in like your 10th grade classroom. But the reality is that the joy in all of this is, um, is, 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 is doing the work and being on the journey. So I want to say something. Thank you for your question. Um, this is very humbling, as I said before. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and, and I want to say, as we're finishing, um, you're not going to hear it enough this weekend, but you guys coming and giving your hard-earned money to the actors that are sitting behind the table, you have no idea the impact that can have on people's lives, right? We're not worried about, like, Mel Gibson. He's going to be okay. <laughs> we can assume. Maybe not, but we can assume. But the idea of, like, you buying an autograph or you purchasing a photo, it, it helps people feed their families. And... You may not hear it enough, but we are eternally grateful for you being here, and we thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Everybody, please give a huge round of applause, everybody.